Don't mess with me, pork chop. <sighs> what day is this? It's February 2nd. Groundhog Day. You know, I thought it was yesterday. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. And it's time to talk about the Marvel solicitations for July 2021. There's a few events. There's less events than are going to be in June, but we're getting a Spider-Man event. What else? Are we, we got? There's a couple events in there. What else are we getting? We getting? Is this? What is it? Um, something Carnage. There's a Carnage event rolling out of King and Black. So we had Absolute Carnage, King and Black, and now we've got an Extreme Carnage. I think is what it's called. But there's no Donny Cates or Ryan segment, so we'll see how that one goes. I hope you all are ready. We're going to use Newsarama.com. We're going to bring it up. We're going to talk about all the solicitations, what to be excited about, what we can glean, see if there are any cool covers to talk about as well, and maybe some of the stuff to avoid in this guy's opinion. All right, let's bring her up. Getting top billing, at least on the Newsarama site, via game, Games Radar. Is it Game Radar? I think it's Games Radar. Is Amazing Fantasy number one. This is the miniseries from Carrie Andrews. I'm super excited about this. If you give me a comic book, with a disheveled Captain America riding a griffin with an enormous axe in his hand, you're getting my money. That's, there's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Or coconuts, you know what I'm saying? And here's the, the other, the alternate cover that they're showing. That one's definitely not. Look, look at this. He's on a griffin, people. You, ugh, you can't say no to that. I've talked about this enough on the channel. I'm super duper excited. We're getting Red Room, Black Widow. We're getting Teenage Spider-Man, and we're getting World War II Captain America teaming up on an island to fight some stuff. I'm not even upset about the 32-page $4.99 cover price, I guess. I wish it was $3.99, but normally you would expect to get 40 pages out of something like this from Marvel. So it appears that they're following DC Comics lead, and you're probably going to hear a lot of $4.99 throughout this video. Next up, we have Sinister War number one of four. This is the first big event that they've got. This is Nick Spencer, Mark Bagley. It's going to be awesome. It's going to cross over into Amazing Spider-Man, as you can imagine. And this is essentially going to be the Sinister Six, led by Doc Ock, returning to the ASM franchise since Nick Spencer took over, squaring off against the Savage Six, led by Vulture. The art by Mark Bagley is... This is going to be great. We do have Brian Hitch returning to Marvel Comics, and that's who made this cover right here. Looks terrific. And you can see there's an enormous amount of variant covers. We obviously covered this on the channel as well. 40 pages, $5 for the first issue. We're getting two issues. And the second one is 32 pages, $5. With the same uh, creative team, Nick Spencer, Mark Bagley, and Brian Hitch. We don't really see the, the cover. Maybe this is a wraparound cover. And we're not, I imagine that is a wraparound cover. We'll, we'll see. As I said, Amazing Spider-Man would be tying into this. And we've got Amazing Spider-Man 70 with Federico Vicente on art. We're supposed to get Patrick Gleason on ASM. He's supposed to be one of the primary artists. We never see him. But I, I will say this, Federico Vicente's art's really good. It's not great, but it's, it's pretty darn good. It's, it's not bad by any means. So he'll be doing that issue. So we're getting four issues of, <laughs> of Sinister War after we're getting four issues of Chameleon Conspiracy in June. My goodness, of course. Extreme Carnage Alpha. I think this thing is going to bomb harder than you can imagine. It will be the return of Flash Thompson within the symbiote work universe. But, you know, it's Philip Kennedy Johnson. I'm a big fan of his, but that ain't Donny Cates. It's Manuel Garcia. Sure, he's a fine artist. He ain't Ryan Stegman. And we've had two big, you know, Venom, Symbiote, King and Black, you know, Carnage events. We had Absolute Carnage. We had King and Black. This is way too soon to be getting another Extreme of Carnage event. I think this is going to go down quite badly. 40 pages, $5 for the alpha issue. We're going to get Extreme Carnage Scream. Who asked for that? At least it's only four bucks. Extreme Carnage Phage. Steve Orlando, four dollars. Like this, it's too much. It's too much, Marvel. Give us a break. Let us breathe in between these symbiote events. X-Men number one. This is going to be the relaunch of the title following Hellfire Gala with Jerry Duggan as the writer, Pepe Duraz as the artist. We're getting the new X-Men team. 
It's going to be Cyclops. It's going to be Jean Grey. It's going to be Rogue. Who else have we got on this team? We're going to have Polaris. We're going to have X-23 in sync, I believe it is. You can see he's kind of mimicking the, um, the powers of Cyclops on this cover. Pretty good cover. I am not excited about this. At least it's 48 pages and five dollars. <laughs> and look at all these, look at all these variant covers. They're really going hard after this. Maybe wait, are we getting? Yep, there's Patrick Lee, and there's his contribution. He's doing covers. Isn't what a waste. That dude was one of the creative driving forces of one of the better eras in, in Superman in recent times, and he's just being completely wasted by Marvel Comics. Shocking, right? But this is a waste. They think that you know they can. Jerry Duggan's going to be able to prop up a, or X Men is going to be able to prop up Jerry Duggan on a title and maintain sales. I disagree with them, but I've been wrong before. We shall see. Moon Knight number one. This is something I imagine a lot of people are excited for. We got Jed McKay. He's the Black Cat writer. He's also the Taskmaster writer. Taskmaster was off, uh, awful. If he takes this character as unseriously as he did Taskmaster, this will. All this will also be awful. Moon Knight is going to be in the MCU soon. So I imagine this is an important title for them. Alessandro Capuccio. We'll, we'll see about that one. 40 pages, $5. We got a facsimile edition about Moon Knight. Probably the first, first appearance, I imagine. Amazing Spider Annual Number 2. When I saw all the annuals in this solicitation, I was like, is this a month with, with five Wednesdays? I forgot. Infinite Destinies is still going on. So there's three events going. And this is Amazing Spider-Man Annual number two. Part of the, it says Infinite Fury now. Is it no longer Infinite Destinies? Is it Infinite Fury? Is that the Infinity Stone War or the Infinity Stones event this year? They all say Infinite Fury. It's really strange. $5. And this is going to be... Star Spider-Man versus Star. There you go. Thor annual number one. Aaron Cooter writing and, and illustrating should look great. Aaron Cooter was built to write a story like this. We've got Thor versus Thor. Well, is he fighting Jane Foster Thor or a real Thor? Who knows? Five dollars. Symbiote Spider-Man Crossroads number one. I've been enjoying these. I did not like the Symbiote Spider-Man King and Black tie-in thing they made Peter David do. I thought it was substandard and it was kind of silly. But I'm definitely back on board this Crossroads uh, deal, even though it's $5. Everything's $5, isn't it? Oh, my goodness. They're making us pay $5 for Greg Land's Tracy. Come on, Marvel. Why are we doing this? But the story is going to be great. Peter David's done really good work on these symbiote Spider-Man stories as well as the Maestro stories. Hopefully we're getting another uh, follow-on to that as well. United States of Captain America. And we are going to get introduced to the Captain America of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, I think. Christopher Catewell, Mahali Mashido, Dave Eaglesham, Natasha Bustos. Five dollars, instant pass. I'm not interested in this series at all. Game of Flight. Al Ewing, Crystal Frazier, Land Medina. People, people like. Al Ewing's Immortal Hulk run. Obviously, it is coming to a close, and he's getting this Game of Flight um, miniseries. We'll see how it goes. All right, Alien. This one's interesting. I like it enough that I'm probably just going to keep reading it. I'm not sure if this is an ongoing or what's going on. I cannot wait for Salvador Loroco to get off of it. Uh, he is the wrong artist for this series. They just need to go back to whoever they had at Dark Horse. They had like three or four really good Alien artists. Just go pay them. And get Salvador LaRocca to, to illustrate something he actually likes. Because it's quite apparent that this, this Alien series is just lifeless with his art. But the story is perfectly fine as, a, as, a, uh, as an Alien comic. The creature that almost killed Cruz is back to finish the job. All right. Sounds like we're entering the finale of the first story arc, at least. Here's another one I'm excited for. Alien's Aftermath. This is like... A celebration of the 35th anniversary of James Cameron's Aliens, which is fantastic. I really like Benjamin Percy. I think Dave Walker is a bad choice for the artist, but they don't ask me about these things. Five dollars. 
Trials of Ultraman. I've I've liked the Ultraman series a little bit. It kind of has drug a little bit for me. We'll see if um, maybe Kyle Higgins can pick up the pace and get some excitement back into the series soon. But it's only $4. You got to love that. Carnage, Black, White, and Blood. I am so out of any of these. If it's what, what black, white, red, black, white, and blood, black, white, and gold. I, it's been so overused. They have it. They're doing it at Dynamite now. It's Vampirella, black, white, and red. Like, uh, could we just absolutely abuse a, an idea for a comic series on, on every single publisher and just make it a complete worthless idea as soon as possible? That's what happened with all these. So, $5. Shang Chi number three. I'll probably be re reading this. Obviously, Shang Chi. We just saw the first trailer in MCU. Big important character for them. I read the 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 mini series, at least the first issue from Gene Yang. It wasn't terrible, but it just wasn't very good. But we shall see. It looks like we're gonna have Shang Chi versus Wolverine. Wolverine ought to kick his ass, or maybe he won't. Who knows? But um, I'm gonna give this one a, a chance and see how it goes. X Men Legends number five. Peter, David, and Todd Knock. Peter, David, returns to place a missing piece of the X-Factor puzzle. Mutants have taken hostages, and X-Factor is taking the blame. But before judgment is rendered for Polaris, Havoc, Wolfsbane, Strong Guy, Quicksilver, and Madrix, the multiple man, Val Cooper, and X-Factor will take the stand. But who's telling the truth and what really went down at the Latvian embassy? It all makes sense from a certain point of view. There you go. I'll definitely be reading this. I have enjoyed these, although X-Men Legends number two, as far as the story, was a little bit of a letdown. X-Corp, you could not pay me to read a Tinny Howard X-Men comic again. Way of X number four. See, I thought, I think this is supposed to be a miniseries. I think it's supposed to be a four or six parter, but they're not putting that on here. So is that the case or is it supposed to be ongoing? If this is going to be an ongoing, it's going to fail. There's no way this is going to last. And I do think Cy Spurrier is going to drop the ball if you watch my review of the comic book this week. But it was a very promising start. Nightcrawler must act to avoid catastrophe as the laws of Krakoa are tested to their limits. Well, at least it's only four bucks. Children of the Atom. We're going to review this on the channel. We're going to review every issue of V.I. Alice Children of the Atom until it's canceled. Likely at eight issues or something like that. There's no way this one makes it very long. Hellions 13. This is going to be fantastic. Hellions has been awesome. Ooh. It's Sinister versus Sinister. I've never seen that before. And now we've got Roge Antonio on the art. Well, that sucks. He's not a bad artist. I bet I would really enjoy the Steven Segovia art. There you go. It looks like his clone is returning to Krakoa to claim the cape and destroy the Hellions. Yeah. We'll see. I dropped Sword just because I'm so tired of it being interrupted by events. So the last annihilation, this is the crossover with Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm glad it's not an event, but this this thing has just been derailed by King of Black. It's going to be derailed by, by Hellfire Gala, and then it's moving right into a crossover story, so whatever. All right, I can read this one. Wolverine with Adam Cooper on art. And it looks like we're getting solemn. Variant cover by Stegman. Stolen goods, a torch ship, a missing sword. Wolverine's on the case. And what? But what mind games is solemn playing? And we finally get the X-Men villain comes to his own in this arc. So you're finally going to learn a little bit about solemn, who we saw kind of sneak into our universe during the um, the Ten of Swords event. X Force Twenty One. This thing is dying. Especially with the, uh, I think I can't remember the guy's name. The artist, I think it's Gary Brown. It is so bad. It's atrocious. I can't even read it anymore when he's illustrating. It's so it's fucking awful. But Josh Casera looks like he's back on art on issue twenty one. Fear of a green plant. No, I might just be done with X X Force. I'm so tired of the. Uh, Of the plant villains. No. New Mutants number 20. I'm not reading this one. Marauders 22. Jerry Duggan on an X-Men comic. Enough said. Excalibur 22. Tinny Howard on an X-Men comic. Enough said. So what we're seeing here, or what we're missing, is an X-Factor comic. 
and I have been told that it has been stealth canceled. Waiting for confirmation on that so we can talk about it here on the channel, but there's likely you're never ever going to see an X Factor by Leah Williams come up again. And we know that she is getting, I believe, the next month in August, another title. Whatever. Spider Woman. I have not been reading that. This one pissed me off that they uh, that they rebooted it just to tie it into King of Black. I thought that was lame. But this is the infinite, does it say infinite destinies here? Infinity score is the start of an infinite fury. I don't I don't know what it is, man. Is this are we still in the clone saga? Clone saga reaches its cataclysmic conclusion. Yeah. Let's borrow some more ideas. Spider-Man, Spider-Shadow. I enjoyed the first issue of this, but if uh, you're looking for a hopeful Spider-Man, this is not the, the story for you. Ships at Archie, Pascal Ferry. Uh, it, was, it was good. Definitely worth your time and your money. But it's only four bucks. They love us. Nonstop Spider-Man was a little too nonstop. And uh, I, I, I like the art. I probably should have uh, kept on with this one, but comics are too expensive. You can't just keep sticking with things, hoping that they're going to you know, turn around. World War She-Hulk. Jason Aaron continues to shit the bed on Avengers. Will this go down as the worst run in Avengers history? Quite possibly. Five dollars. Captain Marvel is making it to issue 30. This is a big deal. Is this going to end up being the longest running Captain Marvel series ever? I know a lot of people are enjoying Kelly Thompson's work on it. I'll take your I'll take your word for it. And it's a double, a special doubles oversized issue for five dollars. Marvel anime variant by Peach Malone. That's probably one worth buy. Iron Man 10, been awful. Fantastic 30, Fantastic 434. Wake me up when Dan Slot's not writing it. Black Widow number nine. Eternals. I heard the story on here got good, but the first issue. The snooze fest. Comics are too expensive. If you don't get me on on the hook, I'm. I used to try to give every series three issues, but it's, it's too expensive. I, mean, I don't have the time for that. Avengers Next Strike. If no one reads a comic, did it really ever exist? That's the question. Black Knight: Curse of the Ebony Blade. See, this is the place for size period. X Men, not so much, in my opinion. We'll see. Guardians of the Galaxy, The Last Annihilation, tie-in. Who's the villain? Who do you think the villain is? Let me know in the comment section. Beta Ray Bill, 5 of 5. This has uh, been very good. At least the first issue was. I'm quite enjoying it. And uh, I hope Be Beta Ray Bill gets his group back. Hopefully he's pretty by the end of this one. So he can, uh, you know, lay with Lady Sif. You know what I'm saying? Thor and Loki, Double Trouble. Nah. Thor 15. Donnie Cates and Michelle Bandini. Now, I understand a lot of people are upset that Nick Klein is off the art, but Marvel Comics apparently has heard people, and they have assured them that Nick Klein is returning. Apparently, a lot of people are like, screw that. So this is, what is this? The wounds of Donald Blake have not yet healed. That story ended in April, so we're still feeling the effects in July. The new hell is a foot. With all inhabitants back in Asgard, and Odin's presence returned after being so away so long, an heir of tension now sits upon the throne. Father and son, all father and all father. Odin and Thor, is this relationship forever doomed? And what does it mean for the Ten Realms? Join Donnie Cates and guest artist Michelle Bandini for the start of a Midgard-shaking new arc, Revelations. Uh, actually, that's not a very good solicit. I imagine the story is much better than that. He's He's been doing a good job on Thor so far. Chavez, America Chavez made in the USA. Again, if no one reads the comic, did it really exist? Reptile. Mighty Valkyries. Man. Somebody put Jason Aaron out of his Marvel misery. Just let him go write some image stuff for a while. Runaways. Champions. Oh, man. On Monday, Pele and I are going to review the first issue of Champions with Danny Lore. Everybody's the, the industry's been crowning Danny Lore as the new big thing in comic books, the new it writer. Not so fast. When you see, yeah, let's be honest, 
Paley and I are going to roast the crap out of this comic book because it was so awful. But you've got to see it to believe it. The, the, the dialogue. It's, it makes Bendis look like Jeff Johns. And I mean that. I'm not, I am being facetious, but I'm not being that facetious. You know what I'm saying? It is bad. Do not read this comic book. Immortal Hulk 48, coming up to the end, will end on issue 50. Savage Avengers, the only thing Jerry Duggan's doing right now worth a damn. Daredevil, the best comic that everybody should be reading, but they aren't. Mike Hawthorne back on art. I always prefer it with Marco Cicchetto, but, you know, the Mike Hawthorne stuff is good as well. Lockdown. The Angel of Death has come to Hell's Kitchen in New York City. A series of grisly murders tests Electra's metal and commitment to a role as the new Daredevil as the city spirals in a state of near panic. Meanwhile, Matt Burnock faces tests and challenges of his own as the inmates he's serving time alongside aren't the ones in the prison targeting him. Well, apparently it's the guards. I thought he was dead. I thought he got poisoned and he died in the uh, in the prison yard. That's what I read in the last issue of Daredevil. Way to spoil it, Marvel. Apparently Matt Murdock lives. But that's this is a great series. You should be reading it. Conan the Barbarian. I don't have personally anything against Jim Zub, but they, they put him on a book when it's ready to die. That's the truth. Star Wars High Republic. Still not looking any better. Sorry, Caven Scott. You were not the chosen one. Star Wars War Bounty Hunters. Okay, this thing's going into uh, to winter. Wow. Because everything's tying into this, right? It's going to end up being like, like 30 or 35 issues, something like that. Charles Sewell, Charles Sewell Luke Ross. Uh, any of these covers cool? I, I, I don't like the action figure covers. I think they're lazy and stupid. But this one's fine, I guess. You got Java... And you have uh, Boba Fett's floating head. All right, now that's not cool. That that actually um, that art that cover by Steve McNiven sucks. I don't think that is a Steve McNiven cover. I think they just it must be this Giuseppe Cam and Cola who's a good artist. Headshot, Mary. That must be. Is that the headshot they're talking about? But, yeah, that sucks. Star Wars War Bounty Hunters Jabba Jabba the Hut number one. Justina Ireland. That's a better comic book cover. I'll give it that. No. Star Wars 15. War of Bounty Hunters. Charles Sewell, Ramon Rosanas. No. Star Wars Doctor Actor 12. Melissa Long. I'm not even going to try and say that name. Pass. Star Wars Bounty Hunters 14. Ethan Sachs. This is the one I stuck, stuck on the, loud, the longest. But he, he eventually wore me out. Star Wars Darth Vader. Nah, that is a boring cover. That is not exciting. This is much more exciting. This is kinetic. It feels like action's going to happen. This feels like Darth Vader's going to walk in on you taking a dump or something. Like, oh, sorry, Lord Vader. Let me pinch this one off and get, get back to work. This, uh, look at the lack of imagination. This is what Marvel Comics is, is allowing as, as a Star Wars Darth Vader cover these days. But that is the solicitations for Marvel's July 2021 comic books. We've got some winners in here, but we got a lot of losers as well. Hopefully, you get some of the good stuff. You avoid the bad stuff. If you like events, you've only got three events in June. We had five. This this month, we only... Well, I guess we have four, don't we? Yeah, we do have four. Because we got Sinister War. We got Infinite... Fury or Destinies, one or the other still going on. We got uh, War of Bounty Hunters. What's the other one? Extreme Carnage. So four events. Maybe it's not. Maybe they're still relying on events in July 2021. Maybe I jumped the gun. All right. Let me know what you think about the July solicitations from Marvel Comics. And join me tomorrow when I talk about DC Comics.